The prospect that two-thirds of the world's population will have no access to fresh drinking water by 2025 has provoked the initial confrontations in a worldwide battle for control over the planet's most basic resource. When Bolivia sought to refinance the public water service of its third largest city, the World Bank required that it be privatized, which is how the Bechtel Corporation of San Francisco gained control over all of Cochabamba's water, even that which fell from the sky. Esta ley, este contrato, prohibían a la gente acumular el agua de la lluvia. Por lo tanto, el agua de la lluvia también se privatizaba. La factura de agua le daba un valor legal a la empresa para que pueda apropiarse de su, de su propiedad, de su vivienda, rematando la misma. La gente debía eh, optar por una decisión de comer menos, pagar del agua, pagar por los servicios básicos, dejar de mandar a los niños a la escuela, eh, no asistir a los hospitales y curarse en la propia casa, o en todo caso, eh, gente jubilada, por ejemplo, que tiene una renta muy, muy baja, debería eh, buscar trabajo en las calles. Con la consigna de el agua es nuestra carajo, la gente sale a las calles, sale a los caminos y eh, protesta. ¿no? The price this beleaguered country paid for World Bank loans was the privatization of the state oil industry and its airline, railroad, electric and phone companies. But the government failed to convince Bolivians that water is a commodity like any other. Entonces, eh, ahí sí eh, vimos eh, que el gobierno defendía los intereses de la transnacional Bechtel porque la gente quería agua, no gases. La gente quería justicia y no balas. Estas son las imágenes que reflejan definitivamente la situación que vivió Cochabamba durante la jornada de este viernes. Bolivia was determined to defend the corporation's right to charge families living on two dollars a day, as much as one quarter of their income for water. The greater the popular resistance to the water privatization scheme, the more violent became the standoff. Y por eso vieron centenares de heridos jóvenes que. A sus 16, 17 años perdieron brazos, perdieron piernas, quedaron paralíticos, quedaron lesionados de la cabeza de por vida y murió mmm, Víctor Hugo Daza. Transnational corporations have a long and dark history of condoning tyrannical governments. Is it narcissism that compels them to seek their reflection in the regimented structures of fascist regimes? There was an interesting connection between the rise of fascism in Europe and the consciousness of politically radical people about corporate power, uh, because there was a recognition that fascism rose in Europe with the help of enormous corporations. Mussolini was greatly admired all across the spectrum. Business loved him. Investment shot up. And suddenly when Hitler came in in Germany, the same thing happened there. Investment shot up in Germany. He had the workforce under control. He was getting rid of dangerous left-wing elements. Investment opportunities were improving. There was no problems. These are wonderful countries. <laughs> 